Hi, I didn't see you there. I was just doing some article writing. You know, you're going to have to get pretty good at writing articles if you want to succeed in your GCSE English or A-level language. Otherwise, you're probably going to fail. Throughout our AS year, our A-level studies and our trips regarding HQ, we've learned a bit about the structure of a feature article. Let's start with the title. What does one look for in a title? A clear, crisp headline explaining exactly what the article is about so the reader knows what they're in for. No, absolutely not. We're not news writers, we're feature writers. Know the difference. We want a title as vague as possible. Titles can be vague, comedic, punny if you will, or very short. The aim here is to make the reader wonder what the article is going to be about. The vagueness leaves a sense of mystery, enticing them to find out what the issue is here. Part of the reason that we can be as vague as we like in a title is in the sample. This is a small sentence following the title that summarises what the article is about. But what about that fearsome opening paragraph? Another bloke at The Guardian advises opening a feature article with some kind of anecdote or story, anything that can be described viscerally, using all the senses to fully immerse the reader in the story, get them emotionally invested. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't see you there. The nut graph. The what? The nut graph. Hmm? According to Scanlon, 2003, the nut graph is a paragraph in a feature story that explains the news value of the story. Introduced to us by Elliot at the Guardian Education Centre, it was enforced as being an essential part of any feature article. It should be around 200 words long, just as any other section in the body of your article, Aim to make a feature article no more than 1,000 words long, and within this, try to include as many voices as possible. This could be quotes, statistics, etc. Include at least one quote or stat in every paragraph to make yourself appear very reliable and very clever. If you want to write for a quality newspaper, HTCS does not do the Daily Mail, please, um, then you want to appear reliable to your target audience or people like that are highly educated. Conclusions. A conclusion is mainly always the hard bit because, you know what, there is no set format for it. Unlike an essay, there's no general structure or rule you can apply. Maybe follow a more general rule. Anything goes as long as it flows. Uh, and you can end on a quote, a rhetorical question, a declarative. If it sounds complete and finished, the chance is. Probably is. Convoy sipped her chardonnay, then set the glass down, reclined back in her chair and narrowed her eyes at me. Yeah. Popcorn Ryan. Ever since the fight Bruce had been in, oh, I don't even know what I said then. Popcorn Alice. Motivated by the fear of failure, we contacted actual Guardian writer Gary Nunn to find out more about how to best write a language article, especially Mind Your Language section of the online page, but you should know that as I'm sure you're already reading it 24 7. Here are the tips he got back to us with. Start with the news hook to peg your story to. Never forget the sartorial metaphor. Journalists use these all the time. Side note! A sartorial metaphor is a metaphor suited to the story you are covering. It sounds complex, but it's a very basic idea and great vocabulary to use in an analysis essay. A subject like linguistics can seem geeky and dry to the outside world, but language is the essence of what it is to be human. Your job is to make that relevant, sexy and fresh, like Ryan. Oh, look at that jaw. Ryan. Meaty Adams. <laughs> oh. Ryan. Ryan. Um, you look sexy. Thank you. There are two types of stories stories about people and stories about dreams. Make your linguistic story about people and don't focus too heavily on the dreams. Logically, we can deduce that this means that any linguistic speech should always come back to people. Language is what makes us human after all, so don't get too caught up in the technicalities that you forget the humanity of it all. Gary Nunn advises to set yourself a deadline and stick strictly to it. Nobody writes anything good without a deadline. Thrive under pressure, it germinates creativity. Do your research and check every fact three times, at least three times, from three different sources. If you stuff up, your readers are going to notice. This means check everything you're quoting from the right people and the right papers in the right years, or the right events from the right places. Don't make the embarrassing mistake like the BBC did in 2006. The taxi driver turned up at the BBC studios for an interview for a job as a data support cleanser, but was mistaken for tech expert Guy Cooney, and quickly rushed on set to be asked questions about Apple's court cases. Needless to say, people found out, and it was embarrassing. <laughs> 
this all mean for the industry and the growth of music online? Well, Guy Cuny is the editor of the technology website uh, News Wireless. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. Were you surprised by this uh, verdict today? I'm very surprised to see this verdict to, to come on me because I was not expecting that. When I came, uh, they told me something else and I'm coming. You, you got an interview there, so it's a big surprise anyway. A big surprise. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, with regards to uh, the cost that's in, in, involved, um, do you think uh, now more people will be downloading online? Uh, actually, if you can go everywhere, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of people downloading to the internet and the website, everything they want. But I digress. Inject your own personality into your writing if it's relevant for the audience. It'll feel more natural and authentic. And in terms of structure, lay out a rough structure before, not after, you start writing. The first line of your article is always the hardest, and one of the most important things you'll write. Once you get that right, everything will flow from there. Gary Nunn says he often writes an article around 2,000 words, then goes back and trims, trims again, and again, until it's no more than 800 words. This will sharpen your piece. Follow George Orwell's advice. If you can cut a word out, always cut it out. Use original metaphors and similes, but if they're laboured and barbarous, cut them. Kill your darlings. We all have those phrases and words we're really attached to, but did they add to your main argument? Kill them. And plain English isn't dumbing down. It's communicating with crystal clarity. Thanks, Gary. What more can we say? You heard it here first, folks. From one Guardian writer to some future journalists, good luck and goodbye. Yeah.